Hi! Hi, everybody! And welcome to the last of the Jane Austen ostentatious live shows. We are going to be talking about sense and sensibility today. We have read all of the Jane Austen books now. All of them. All of them. All of them. All of them. We are on fire. Go us. High fives <laughs> all around. Bye, yeah. everyone. <laughs> Great. Okay, good. <laughs> I did it. So, let's introduce ourselves first. I am Zoe from Red by Zoe. You're on my channel right now. Hello. And who wants to go next? I am Natasha from Tashopolis. Did we say anything else? <laughs> oh, <laughs> fun fact. Fun fact. Oh. Fun. I, oh. Go, Hannah. I, we're going to skip my fun fact. <laughs> okay. Um, I am Hannah from A Clockwork Reader. And I'm Maureen from Maureen TV. No fun facts. No fun oh. facts. No fun facts. Okay. Oh, I should bring up the thing for the chat section. Um, and yeah, we'll talk about what you thought about this book. Maureen, you go first. <laughs> go first. Okay. I love Sense and Sensibility. I don't know that I loved it as much this time, but I'm not really sure why that was. I think it might have been the audiobook that I was listening to. Oh, but wow. I just love it. So much. I love the juxtaposition of um, the sisters and how differently they approach their relationships and how, like, there's it's just so much. Whereas, like, hold on, my mom just came home. Sorry, so it's gonna get loud. I gotta close the door. <laughs> um, but like in Pride and Prejudice, you have Pride and Prejudice on the side of Darcy and Lizzie, but it's more like subtle. Whereas with Sense and Sensibility, you, like, see so much difference and so much, um, yeah, like, in two very different stories. And I really like that, like, really there's two main characters. There's, um, yeah, there's, like, two main characters and two main love stories rather than just one, which is really fun. And I just, I love everyone, and I, I think that maybe watching the movie made me love, is it Edward? I know we were all just talking about names, but I think, I think it's, is it Edward? Edward Ferris. Yeah. 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 I really, like, I loved him in the movie so much that I think that it just, like, bled over to the book that I was like, oh my gosh, I love you. Um, <laughs> and I like how complicated the characters are. Like, there's a lot of, like, depth to them. They just have a lot of different like there's a lot of different things at play where they're not just like pretty much like you hate them or you love them like you can understand and relate to them well and, yeah. oh. i know he's terrible i know he's i know no i'm but, not talking about a he I'm talking about fanny okay yeah yeah <laughs> sorry but drama <laughs> drama. I mean, like, for the most part, there's still some, like, pretty terrible people, and you're like, I hate you. But for the most part, it's not like, it's very much different for me from Mansfield Park, where I just really did not like anybody very much <laughs> at all. I was like, I want, you can all just be gone, and I'm done with you. But, yeah. So, those are my initial thoughts. <laughs> Natasha, it's your turn, because you have to explain yourself. Fine. Um, <laughs> I, oh gosh, I really like Sense Sensibility. Um, I think this was the first Jane Austen story that I was ever, um, that I'd ever seen. Like, I, I saw the movie first. That was the first Jane Austen movie I've ever seen. And it, uh, like, it, I was introduced to the world of Jane Austen from this point. But reading it was such a delight. I didn't realize how much um, my family life had um, related to uh, their family life, you know, losing their father and having to move out of their home and um, the oldest daughter having, you know, to um, uh, make sense of this new life. And I just, I really related to Eleanor a lot. So I feel like, um, and just, I, I, I loved it so much because I could relate to it like even though it was like 200 years like since the story was told i could still relate to it and um you're right there are a lot of redeeming factors to some of the evil characters like the evil characters um 
Yeah. <laughs> Maria, I'm like looking right at you. So. <laughs> um, and, um, uh, gosh, I don't, I don't know what else to say, but I just, I think this is my favorite Jane Austen story and I was so pleasantly surprised by it. Yeah, it is. My favorite. Wow. I think I was so entertained. There were so many like twists and there was so much drama and there wasn't a lot of, you know, the society, um, you know, long paragraphs and descriptions of society. I mean, there was, but a lot of it was really interesting to me. I don't know. I really liked reading this one the most. <laughs> okay, I'm I, done. Okay. <laughs> I have to agree with both of you. I really liked this one a lot more than I expected to. I had no idea what the plot of this one was about. And honestly, I think reading experience wise, this was like, my favorite of all of them like of the like if we're including the movies the movie for pride and prejudice is still like my favorite thing but like the book sense and sensibility i think was my favorite one to read um i totally agree that i loved the juxtaposition of the sisters and i just like stories about sisters like being an older sister myself i really liked eleanor's character um but i just liked the dynamic between the two of them and the relationships that they had with like everyone else and i liked the fact that um the commentary in this one i felt like was a lot more subtle and like actually ingrained into the story so i think like like natasha you were saying it was more interesting for you i think that's probably why like i felt the same way um it felt like it actually fit in really well with the story as well um i just it was just so good and it was so dramatic and so entertaining <laughs> Well, I agree with all of you because I loved it too. I think it's right up there with Emma. Well, all three of them, Emma, Pride and Prejudice, and Sense and Sensibility are all like neck and neck and then the other three. I enjoyed, but I mean, these are just so great. Um, I love Eleanor and I love Marianne. Marion? Marianne? Marianne. Marianne, that's how I said it. Uh, I think I related more to Marianne than Eleanor though because I'm like – Kind of, you know, eh, boy crazy sometimes. <laughs> oh, in my youth, in my youth, I am an old 21 year old now. But she's just, she falls in love so quickly. What's his face? Willoughby. Willoughby, yeah. yeah. He's so charming. He like charms the pants off you. <laughs> um, but like, like falls in love with him. And I, you know, he, he was really charming. And I just, but then there was Eleanor, I don't know. I can't, I cannot explain myself right now, but I really like, because there were two main characters, I feel like there was more going on because you followed both stories at once. Yeah. So again, there wasn't all of that description because it was mostly like telling a story of two different people. And I love how it was very different from the other ones because there was like the fall from society or whatever. Um, it was different than Mansfield Park because it was kind of the opposite like she was like thrust up but then this I, know, it, I just like there were so many things going on and I had a really fun time and I liked all the men and I liked all the characters <laughs> Jane Austen did it again <laughs> um, so, oh so sorry can I say a thing really fast so I mean I think the reason why maybe like we all related is like being an older sister like that's why I related so hard to Eleanor is like being an older sister and having like things happen in my family in the past and like having some like rough things happen I so understand and I so relate with like needing to be strong for my younger sisters and like almost taking on like their problems and not telling them like everything that's going on with me and like needing to be there for them when they're going through everything like I cannot even tell you, like, how many times, like, things, like, with Marianne and Eleanor, like, especially when she was, like, hurting over Willoughby, like, I've had that with, like, my sisters, so it's kind of, like, not, like, necessarily about guys, but just about other stuff where you're, like, I can't talk, like, I want to keep everything inside and be strong for everybody else, and I was, like, oh, I feel like maybe that's why this is my favorite, is just because I relate so much with Eleanor the most, like, the sister dynamic, having two, two younger sisters, and, like, being in that situation, I just, I'm, like, I get it. I totally understand. I get you. I get you, girl. Gosh, I didn't realize, like, you are Eleanor and, like, Kathleen is very happy. Right? It literally, I can't. 
<laughs> the Graham sisters are the, what are they called? What, what are the last names again? Dashwood? Dashwood <laughs> sisters. Like uh, from what it wants with, you know, Colin Firth. Dashwood? Yeah. I just rewatched that. Sorry about that. But I was like, Dashwood! <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Sense of sensibility. Yeah, there's so many things in the movie that I feel like even add to the book for me. Like, the beginning scene, the movie with Emma Thompson, the beginning scene of that movie where um, their brother and his wife are, like, deciding how they're going to, like, split up the money and, like, take it down and keep taking it down. And you just, like, hate her so much. Um, she, Yeah, she's, like, the only, like, no redeeming qualities. She can die. It's fine. <laughs> Um, but like, I feel like that adds so much because, like, when it's happening in the book, like, you understand what's happening, but in the movie, it's just like so fast. You see how she like wears him down and just like manipulates him, and it's like ah, mm. and just there's so much. I love it. I love it so much. <laughs> That's like not a thing that I love, but like how it portrays it is so good. Yeah. Because it says it in the first like couple of pages in here, but it's different like reading it and then seeing it. Because you read about it, and it's like, maybe it happened, like, over a while. Like, maybe they got some money. But then it was in the movie. It was just like, nah. You're getting nothing. We're going to give you, like, 50 pence a year or something. I don't know. Yeah. But, uh. But it just shows, like. Else? Oh. Just, sorry. Yeah. I what? was going to say, like, it, it, it shows, like, the selfishness and greed of this woman who just cares about herself. And they have, like, so much money. They so have, it's like, oh, yeah. we can't give any money to your sisters because we have to save it for our son. Mm -hmm. And then it, but they have so much to give. So it's just showing that, like, usually it's those who have, like, the least amount, like, are the most giving. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's even, like, she, like, even down to the plates, like, the thing she was having with the plates where she was like, well, like, you guys need to take the plates, but, like, we need those. We need that, like, China or whatever. And I was like, excuse you. And you gave them. Oh my gosh. Uh, what did you think about the men? Let's just go there first because I have many thoughts. What are your thoughts? I really uh, uh, compared Willoughby to, oh crap, what's his name? Oh, Wemmick. Who? Wemmick from Pride and Prejudice. Wemmick? What? We Wemmick. His name's Wemmick? Is that his name? Is that not his name? Who am I thinking of? Wickham. Wickham. Okay, I'm thinking of Great Expectations. That's what's on my mind because I just watched that movie. <laughs> Wickham. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Um, yeah, no, I really compared Willoughby to Wickham. Do you guys do that too? Yeah, absolutely. You're a big person in my head. Yeah. I feel like Willoughby was like a bit more redeemable than Wickham in this book. Like, it's one of those things where, like, he's not actually redeemable, but you see where he was coming from, and you saw a lot more, like, not like I felt for him more, but, like, you saw a lot more of his motivation, whereas Wickham, it was just like, well, you're just, like, awful, and the worst. Super shady, though. Like, you, you didn't really know what was going on behind the scenes. Yeah. But Willoughby, now, yes, Will, sorry, they're both, no. Will be, be. <laughs> did get um, a girl pregnant, and yeah, yeah. So I feel like he had he he saw um, his uh, uh, what's the word something to his actions. He saw the consequences, consequences to his actions, and I think that was a wake up call for him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because didn't Wickham did like do stuff with the ladies, right? But there like weren't any consequences. He just like left a trail of broken hearts. But yeah, uh, or at least we're not aware of anything that he did for sure. Yeah, yeah. we don't know if Lydia. We don't know. Yeah, she could have been pregnant, but she, I mean they got married anyway. Spoilers. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what? I mean, I'm sure they, I'm sure they, they were, like, I'm sure that they were having, like, sex before they got married, but that's oh, just yeah. talked about in the book, right? Yeah. 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 Well, that's why they, like, that's why they tracked them down, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is, we're not talking about Friday and Friday, but, yeah. <laughs> uh, what about, uh, Colonel Brandon? I, Alan Wickwin. Alan Wickwin. Alan Wickwin. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, like in my head when I was reading this. Yeah. That was like the ultimate like unrequited love then fulfilled. I know. And I just, I loved how much he like cared about their family regardless of how he was being treated by Marianne. He was such like in that sense he was such a good guy. Like I wasn't necessarily like you you kind of pull for Willoughby at the beginning because you don't know how terrible he is and you want him to like fight and he's not. Um he's charming. But like but Colonel Brandon is just such a kind and nice. Like he's the ultimate like trademark nice guy um <laughs> but like not like the bad nice guy if you know what i'm saying yeah. like he loves the dashwood sisters no matter what he's there for them no matter what he does stuff for them no matter being him aka running out of the room like anytime he comes in <laughs> i just love that he didn't expect anything in return like, that's yeah. what I think made him so kind. Like, he was willing to do all of this, like, regardless, like you were saying, of how she treated him, but he didn't expect anything in return, and that's what made him so, like, wonderful and why I liked him so much, because I feel like you don't see a lot of characters like that, especially for, like, in these Jane Austen novels of, like, the romance and, like, all of that. And he's just so good. It's yeah, well, it's always, like, like the friend zone, and they're like, oh, yeah. like, mm-hmm. that's stuff. Like, he's, he's he just like, I'm, like, I'm your friend. friend. Yeah, he wasn't being terrible yeah. about it because he was just such a good person. Um, what is, oh. I'm trying to think of like the word. It's like a version of love that's. Dang it! I can't. There's a word that I can't think of. Like where you love people no matter what, like and don't expect anything in return. Unconditional. 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 There we go. Thank you. I was like, there's a word in there. It's not coming to my mind. How much yeah. older was he? Oh. Uh, was he like thirty five? Yeah, he was oh, no, no, no. okay. Seventeen. Yeah, it was a lot like. But that's kind of like Emma, right? Yeah, yeah. But I don't know why. Like, I think it's because I saw the movie, and like in Emma, they don't look that like far apart in like age difference. But then in this, it's Alan Rickman, and he looks like a little older. So I'm just like, he's so old, but I love him. But he's so old, but. <laughs> Is that? Oh my goodness! Wait, how? How? What was like the age expectancy back then? Like fifty, sixty. People died at fifty. Really? Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't know. Maybe sixty. I feel like. The- yeah, I think. I feel yeah. like max seventy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> just want. I just wanted to know that fun fact. Um, also, um, um, wait, well, who were we just talking about? Alan Rickman, what was his name again? Colonel Brandon. Colonel Brandon. Like, he just, ha- he had a tragic past, like a, pr- a tragic love story with, um, no, I can't, I don't know anyone's name. His <laughs> wife, or, do you mean his previous wife or Marianne? No, was it his, his previous wife? No, it she, was, no, he was never married. Oh, yeah. That's, it was, right. the girl like, that he was in yeah, the girl he yeah. was in love with who got married to his sister, no, his brother. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, so it was technically his sister-in-law. Oh. <laughs> so sad. So sad. Oh, my God. <laughs> I know he wasn't even jaded after that. He was just a kind, caring human still. Like, what, what happens, happened. Like, oh, mm-hmm. such a cute man. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, Oh, 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 what's his face? Ferris. Edward? Edward. It's hard, I feel like, with him. Like, in the book, I don't like him as much, but then whenever you have his portrayal in the movie, I'm like, I love you. There's just so many, like, little things that are added, like, whenever um, the littlest sister is, like, hiding, and he, like, goes and finds her. Like, that's not in the book, but Mm -hmm. it adds so much to his character. It's and so I cute. In the book, because I'm like, I remember that, but it's no. not in the book. It's so sad because I'm like, I feel like that makes him a lot better of a person. And I also like, I mean, I don't love that he was kind of stringing Eleanor along, but at the same time, he was very like, it was like he kind of was, but he never like went all the way because he knew of this other, like, he knew Lucy was 
still like fawning over him and so he like upheld his principles it was yeah. more like assumed things than like actual things but it can still be like harmful but at the same time he was still like upright in his principles if you will he was not like willoughby him and willoughby are like so different <laughs> that the ending was like too like easily solved though it was just like all of a sudden it's like oh my brother is going to marry lucy now like kind of but it just more i feel like it more showed lucy's character than anything yeah i like whatever is bright and shiny and new is what she liked yeah i agree i wish i had seen like uh, i wish we were able to see um that that like discussion or conversation between Edward and Lucy and even like the mother and like how even she decided to marry his brother and I thought that would have been interesting instead of just mm-hmm. hearing it. That's kind of similar to uh, Colonel Brandon's story though. Like that's true. Huh. Wow. Yeah, I mean, I it's right. I feel but like it's just oh sorry. Yeah, I did, I wasn't saying anything oh, important. Okay. I was just saying, on the, like, love story front, I feel like these, this ending was a lot more satisfying than Mansfield Park, <laughs> a.k.a. <laughs> after, a cert, after, like, a good, like, a good time, they got together, got married, we, we good. Yeah. <laughs> like, after, oh. <laughs> after all that struggle of reading that long story. <laughs> have two sentences of words. <laughs> I'm, I can't. Uh... What do you think, Hannah? Of Edward? Yeah, yeah. about like just the, the romances. The romances. Um, I agree with Maureen in the sense that I think Edward, um, he was like kind of stringing her along, but I do agree that like, yeah, he upheld like what he believed in and he never acted on it. Like he never acted on like how he felt about her. And I think it's just like the classic case of like you meet someone new and you fall in love with them even if you're like possibly engaged with someone else. And, um, but he like never did anything that was like outright wrong. So I really ended up liking it and it was resolved kind of quickly, but I don't know. I just like, it was satisfying. Like it just, I really like the scene where um, she ends up like reacting to, um, or what is it? The scene where he like tells her that he's like broken off the engagement with Lucy and like she like reacts to it and she's like so happy by this because it's just like so satisfying to see her finally get what she wants after like having this entire like book like hold in all of her feelings and she finally gets to be happy and it makes me so so happy because again I just love and relate to Eleanor so much Mm -hmm. but yeah it was so good I loved the romance in this book I think a theme that I saw a lot I mean (laughs) in the story or how many um engagements were secret like every secret or it was like a mistaken engagement where everyone thought they were engaged but they really weren't (laughs) like marianne and willoughby i feel like maybe it's a common like there's a bit of commentary there on like don't like until something is like final and out in the open don't like start commenting on it because that was like everybody was really a gossip in this book so they like thought that Edward and Eleanor were together and thought that Marianne and Willoughby were together. And even, like, her mom was the same way, but it, like, didn't work out in the end. So it's, like, a lot of, like, expected hopes that failed. Commentary on that-ish. That's a lesson I need to learn. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, But, yeah, I really like how um, Eleanor... Like, she was very restrained the whole time. But it's, it's like, the opposite between um, Marianne and her. Like, Marianne learned how to be, like, more centered and, like, controlled. And then Eleanor was able to, like, let her let her true emotions out or whatever. So I really She was like, able to let herself, like, be happy. And, like, she was able to give, like, some, like, care about herself instead of constantly giving to other people. So, yeah, they learn a lot from each other. And I love their relationship. Mm-hmm. And I love how much they, like, they love each other. They have mm-hmm. such a love, it. like, I mean, like, obviously they, like, don't agree on everything and they argue about stuff, but in the end they still, like, come back together and they're not, like, catty fighting all the time. They're just, like, they just love each other so much. I love it. Yeah. Um, hmm. What else? Is anyone well, having a question? Yeah. What? 
Is anyone tweeting us questions? If you guys want to tweet us questions, let us know. Or like you can tag us or in the live chat because I'm looking at that. Okay. Or use the hashtag ostentatious. I will look at that. Just just ask his questions <laughs> about. You can ask him about any of the Jane Austen books that we've read since this is like the end of our Jane Austen reading. Jane Austen, oh, it, it, that was so fast. That was like that was six months, but it yeah. felt shorter, but also way longer. Yeah. <laughs> Not in like a bad way, <laughs> but just like oh, um, the younger uh, fandom and books says the younger sister Margaret plays a very minor role in the novel. Why do you think Austin included this character? Does she further any of the plot? Does she shed light, shed light on any of the characters? Hmm. I honestly, I was gonna say because I was just watching um the the BBC version, which is a lot longer uh, version of the. The story well, has everything in it and more so, but um, it's funny because she just like she says the truth, whatever what all the adults are thinking, and but she'll just like blatantly say it, and it's like especially in the beginning where you know she's having you know this she's young and she's having this upheaval of and like she's not she she's gonna be uncomfortable for the rest of her life and everything's changing for her and so she's being very blatant and saying things. And I feel like she was kind of like the comedic situations. Yeah, I also thought that it showed that Elmore had to actually look after her family because if it was just like yeah. Marianne and her, then like they could take care of themselves. But since there was a younger sister as well, there was like more, like more responsibility, mm -hmm. and showed that like Eleanor still had to be at home to be like the one in charge. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like she doesn't play, a, like, she does have, like, a very, very minor role in the books, or <laughs> the book, which is why I think a lot of the, like, adaptions play her up a lot more and, like, give her more to do. Yeah. Um, like, we talked about that scene with Edward and her in the Emma Thompson movie. Like, she just gets added in a lot more. Um, which I like that better. I would like I would have liked to see more of her in the book rather than just kind of being an excuse for stuff like a like reason for Eleanor to stay home and then like an excuse for them to be able to go to town and leave their mom so she's not lonely. She's like, Well, I got her, it's fine. Um <laughs> go to town and leave me for the rest of the book. Um, but I, oh, yeah. sorry. No, go I ahead. Agree with, I agree with Natasha in the sense that I really saw her as, like, being, like, the one who was able to just, like, blatantly say whatever she was thinking because she was so young, even when the rest of the characters weren't able to, like, say what they were actually thinking. And she got in trouble for it a lot. Like, she wasn't supposed to say certain things, and then they get mad at her. And she's like, why? And that's, like, what you told me. Um, <laughs> so it was, like, such a childish thing to do. But, like, I think they all kind of, like, I don't know if they necessarily learned from it, but I think, like, as someone especially in the movie when you're like watching it you can really see that like this is what all of these people should be doing they should be more honest but they're really not and I think she kind of like is a good foil for that hmm. yeah. um what was your favorite Jane Austen book oh this is from books by Brie hmm. 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 Uh, I already said it I this one is my favorite this is still my favorite mine too Yay! <laughs> Zoe's, uh, yeah. Zoe's still Sorry, Zoe. <laughs> this is my favorite, but I think I think Emma might be my favorite. Ooh, scandalous! Like, what happened to Pride and Prejudice? I don't know, but <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. It's like a top three. It's like top tier and then second tier with all the others. And then yeah. Mansfield Park is just like. <laughs> Mansfield Park is still second tier. <laughs> Why'd you hate it so much? <laughs> I guess it was the worst. It was the worst. Yeah, Mansfield Park was the worst. The worst. Yeah, great, was was the worst. worst. <laughs> For me, Mansfield Park was like the Wuthering Heights. Like, of the um, Bronco sisters, I hate Wuthering Heights. I know you love Wuthering Heights, but I hate so much. <laughs> That's what Mansfield Park was to me. Everyone was the worst. And there was nothing redeemable about them. And I was like, well. Like, incest? <laughs> <laughs> uh, thoughts on Captain Wentworth? That Wait. was 
persuasion. persuasion. Yeah, that was persuasion. Mm-hmm. He was an okay dude. I wanted to know more about him, but it was a super short book. Yeah. He seemed, he seemed rad. I liked him. I liked persuasion a lot more than everybody else. So I, I, feel like- <laughs> I like Mansfield Park a lot more than everyone else. Uh, Phantom in Books has... Oh, wait. Do you guys want to say anything more about Captain Wentworth? No. Uh, not really. <laughs> no, I'm good. He has our stamp of approval. Um, Phantom in Books has another question. What movie versions have you seen, and how do they compare to the world Austin oh. created? Which actresses and actors embody the characters best? So, let's just focus this on sense and sensibility. I've only seen the Emma Thompson version. Me too. And I really liked it. But I yeah. really like Emma Thompson and what's her face from Titanic? Kate, Kate Winslet. Winslet. And what's his face from Bridget Jones' Diary? Hugh Grant. Hugh Grant, Hugh Grant yeah. and Alan Rickman. I like them all. I think they did a really good job. Yeah. That's my, like, favorite. I mean, that... It's, like, in terms of, like, if we're going like, with just, like, favorite books on books, that's, like, one of my favorite adaptations but also the Pride and Prejudice 2005 is just so beautiful. That's the most beautiful out of all of them. Can we agree? Well, I also yeah. saw it like when I was young and before I'd even read the book and before yeah. I really even, like I hadn't read any Jane Austen at that point, but I still was able to follow it and I got like super invested in it. So I think it's really, I think it's a great adaptation and it's like short too. So like not short, but I mean, it's not like the BBC version, which is like many hours. It, well, the BBC version is, uh, 80 minutes per episode, so it's 160 minutes. So it's per three hours. Oh. Oh, so it's only like a two part? Yeah. Oh, okay. Pretty short. But, um, uh, um, uh, la, 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 la. Sense and Sensibility is, I don't know if it's Oscar nominated. I know, I know Emma Thompson won the Golden Globe for the adapted screenplay. Um, so that just goes to show you that, like, Wait, did she write it? Yeah, she wrote it. Emma, Emma Thompson wrote the script. 1995. Yep. And, hold on. I won an Oscar. Start. Let me see. It won one Oscar. There you go. Star. Best writing, screenplay based on material previously produced or published. Emma Thompson. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> it also had a lot of nominations for like... Yeah. Whoa. Wow. Yeah. Well, um, I feel Pride and Prejudice is always going to be my favorite movie of all time. Um, it's just way too beautiful, and Keira Knightley is perfection in it, and it just, oh, I love it so much. The, song, the soundtrack. Oh, and the soundtrack. That, that, that one. I, I so can't. good. Um, I've, I mean, we've, we've all seen almost, we've seen every movie version, right, of, of all the, the novels? I haven't seen Mansfield Park. I, saw I heard that, like those they try to like make it more interesting so they're not even like really adaptations they're just like well I mean they are adaptations but they aren't like close adaptations they try to like liven Fanny up because yeah kind of a Debbie Downer well the no I feel like the Mansfield Park version was um very similar to the book yeah, um, I agree. it was but uh th- there are things taken out of it that like that didn't really make sense just to make it short. I mean, it did make sense, but like things that would have furthered the story a bit more. But um, if you ever decide to watch Mansfield Park or read it, I would say watch it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the hate. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, which actresses and actors embody the characters best? I think that Rosamund Pike mm. is a great Jane in the 2005 version of Pride and Prejudice. She's so beautiful and she's so nice and she does the audiobook for the Pride and Prejudice audiobook. Yeah, and her voices are so great. (laughs) I wish she would do the rest of them. (laughs) Yeah. I know, I was looking for them, but I couldn't find them. I I think I I preferred um, the BBC version of Emma, the actress who played Emma, than Gwyneth Paltrow. Me too. (laughs) Me too. I think, well, I think partly because I know Gwyneth Paltrow is American, and <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> she has a, uh, like, her mom is English, or, like, some of her relatives are English? Yeah, I, not her mom. Her mom's not English. Um, yeah. I think what I first thought, but I, she's, I like, know, like actually, yeah. somebody's English in her family. Yeah. Um, oh, 
Of all the awesome books, which one did you like the least? Vance from Prague. Surprise. What a surprise. I think What's your least. Who? You. Mansfield Park. <laughs> but I think it was called. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Moving on. Um, the best character in Jane Austen, like all, her best character. Ooh. <sighs> Emma. I honestly, I think I agree with Emma. Like, as much as I relate to Eleanor, Emma is just such a dynamic character and grows so much as a character that I'm like, you great. She's so entertaining, too. Oh. Are we saying, like, best, like, person? Or, like, best, like, most interesting character? Favorite? Or, like, our favorite? Or, I don't know. I mean, if we're going with favorite, Eleanor is my favorite. But I think Emma is the best character in terms of, like, growth and how three-dimensional she is and, like, dynamics. Hmm. I'd have to say Elizabeth Bennet. I just, like, think that she's so, like, especially for the time, she's, like, a revolutionary character. I just, I love her. Yeah. I have to agree with Hannah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, all the main characters, except Fanny, are, like, pretty <laughs> <laughs> But Fanny is terrible. Okay. Um, oh, worst character. Ooh. Um, What's your name for Northanger Abbey? Oh, it was the Isabel. Isabella, Isabel. Isabel's Isabel. brother. John. John. What? John. John, what? I can't remember. I'm looking it up. No, okay, I'm but like, I also don't like Mrs. Norris. I also am yes. just really against Mrs. Norris as a character in general. So. Yeah. Oh, Thorpe. Thorpe. Yeah. John Thorpe. I hate him. Okay. Side note. I knew somebody whose last name was Tharp in college, like with an A instead of R, and now I feel like that might have been the reason that I didn't really like him a lot. And now I'm like <laughs> It's gonna be so rough, like if we have children, like trying to name the the our children and being like, Oh, there was this character in this book who had that name and I didn't like him. <laughs> Oh, oh, okay. I already have like my picked out name for my children, and I'm like, no, someone better not like ruin it for me. <laughs> Why don't you tell everyone so everyone can name their children that? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, did what did you guys think? Like, who's the worst character? Uh, I agree with Maureen. Miss Norris is pretty terrible. Yeah. Like, like, terrible to the point of, like, being almost ab abusive. Well, I would say she's emotionally abusive. Yeah, so. definitely. Definitely is. <laughs> so, yeah, both of them. They'd be quite a pair. They're very manipulative <laughs> and just awful. <laughs> oh, which books had the strongest female characters? Oh. I feel like they all did. Yeah. <laughs> but in really yeah. different ways. Yeah. yeah. Prime there were a lot of I, yeah, I think Sense and Sensibility and Pride and Prejudice, definitely. Yeah. And then Emma, they, like, no, the development. Well, I, I definitely think Emma's a very strong female character. Mm -hmm. And she yeah. gets better. I mean, she's not the greatest at first, but then she gets No, better. I mean, she doesn't have to be great to be strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that is very true, yeah. But one thing about Emma is I think she has that privilege and the the availability of being a strong female character because of her standing in society. While on the other hand, uh, like Elizabeth Bennet, uh, is like on a lower um, lower scale than Emma, mm -hmm. um, and I I don't know I feel like Elizabeth was less privileged than Emma and still was spoke out about her feelings and what she thought. So I, don't know. I feel yeah. like. I I mean, she sorry. Was forcing her to like get married, yeah. but then Emma was like, "I don't have to get married because I have like all this money. I'm already like the master mistress of the house or whatever." So yeah, she definitely had the privilege. Uh, oh, if Hollywood was filming from Diana, if Hollywood was filming a new version of Sense and Sensibility in 2017, who would you cast in it? Oh, oh this God. is like Natasha's bread and butter right now. <laughs> Okay. Um, 
gosh, I would probably cast Natalie Dormer as Marianne. Natalie Dormer is um, Cressida from Hunger mm -hmm. Games. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Colin Firth. What? Colin Firth. Because he's oh. kind of older, and he's beautiful, and I love him, and he should be in it. And then be nice. Hugh Grant can still be in it. Sam I mean, Sam, no, <laughs> no, no, no. Sam Claflin as Edward Ferris. Wait. Oh, I that. oh, oh. Um, what? I don't really feel about that. I say I, I support that. that. What? I, mean, I like him, but I feel like he's like almost like I don't know. Who would you cast? Like who would be? I don't know. Well, then we gotta go with Sam Claflin. <laughs> I mean, I can name some other people if you would like me to. <laughs> I gotta think. Who yeah, else is my favorite? Person? I can see him honestly, though. I can see him more as like Willoughby than Edward. Hmm. He just has that like he has that boyish kind of like charming personality. Yeah, like Edward. <laughs> <laughs> Edward is not like I love him, but he Willoughby is a lot more charming than Edward. Yes, Robert Pattinson. <laughs> <laughs> he would never do a mainstream movie, though, anymore. <laughs> that is very true. Oh, gosh. Who would be Eleanor? Who would be Eleanor? Yeah. <sighs> Me? Yes, that would work. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I can't, I'm going brain dead. I, I can't think of anyone who's, like, the most humble to, like, play her. I mean, Emma Thompson is not humble, so I shouldn't really <laughs> say that. I don't know. I'll think about it. We'll come back to the question. Okay. Um, doo -doo. Okay. Phantom and Books, you are, you're killing it with all the questions. Neither Edward or Colonel Brennan is an archetypal romantic hero. Would you change them in any way? Who would you rather marry? I would rather marry Colonel Brandon. Just get that out of the way. I like as much as I love Edward, I love how much how unconditional Colonel Brandon's love is. So I think that I would go with him, like just based on that. Yeah. I agree. I don't know if I would change them in any way. Yeah, I don't know like I'm trying to think. I would maybe make Edward like slightly more willing to stick up for himself and like tell people how he felt like so much in this lucy thing could have been avoided like i know he was really far in and so he didn't want to like say anything but if he could have like talked to her about it because he kind of just let her walk all over him so like i don't know that i would make him like like change that wholly about him but i would like amp it up a, a little bit for him <laughs> hmm. I mean, I like the flaws in their characters. I yeah. think it makes them more interesting and it makes them more human, so I, like, wouldn't really change anything about them. Yeah, Would that's you make them more flawed? Would you what? Yeah. <laughs> sure. Oh, yeah. Just, like, <laughs> of course. I, that's what I love about Jane Austen, though, is that, like, there is no perfect character. Even, like, Jane, who's, who's like, the angel, she still has flaws like she's like too soft-spoken like she won't talk about like her feelings yeah everyone everyone has a flaw and I love it and yeah. even, even the awful characters have some things going for them because no one is no one is ever just good no one ever is just bad and that's, yeah. like, that's just human so who would you marry <sighs> me I, I mean I like the older man so maybe Colonel Brandon <laughs> 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 oh, books by Brie. Do you think there is a change in the meaning of the title Sense and Sensibility over the course of the novel? And in your opinion, is the ending wholly happy? You know what? Like, that's funny because sense, like, sense and Sensibility was never really brought up. Like, how Pride and Prejudice is brought up in the story, how it's like so blatant that like Elizabeth is prideful. And um, Darcy is prejudiced, or is it the other way? I, well, they're they're both of those. Of, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but um, I don't know. Like, who sense and sensibility? Like, sense sense is Eleanor, I would say, and then yeah. sensibility is um, 
Marianne, because Wait, I, Eleanor is the sensible one. She makes the right decision. She like always thinks about other people. And then uh, Marianne's the super emotional one who I is very sense, though. like sense is like with your senses. Like I just googled <laughs> sensibility. Is okay. that what you want to know? The yeah. difference. Sensibility is the ability to appreciate and respond to complex emotional uh, or aesthetic influences sensitivity, which yeah. is Marianne to a T. Yeah. I, I, I want to go outside and look at nature and talk about how much it moves me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> True. Okay. Um, I don't think there's a change. Um, I mean, I can kind of... I don't know that there's necessarily a change, like a switch, but I think the other parties gain that, like especially with Marianne, whenever she goes through her illness and like just becomes a lot more subdued of a person. I feel like it's less of like she's subdued, but more like she's gained sense. And as for sensibility, I feel like Eleanor, like whenever she gets the word from Edward that he, like, the engagement with Lucy is broken, that's when she, like, finally allows herself to feel and finally allows herself to, like, just really, like, become sensitive. And, I like, I don't think they switch as much as they just, like, gain more of the other. Yeah, yeah. I, I would see, I, I definitely saw, like, once Marianne learned of Eleanor's um, attachment to Edward and, or, I mean, she already knew the attachment, but I've learned of, uh, that Edward was already engaged and she was like, you held, you held that for me the entire time while I was moaning and groaning about my, my relationship with Willoughby. And she definitely gained some of Eleanor's perspective and her sense. And, uh, I don't know about, I mean, I guess, I don't know about Eleanor. Do you, you think that she gained some more sensibility or... I think, I should, yeah, not as, again, not as much as, like, Marianne. Yeah. Things. Yeah. But I think maybe she was, like, the whole time, but she just didn't let herself give into it because she was, like, forcing herself to be, like, the perfect role model the whole time. Yeah, exactly. I think, like, that's why, I like I was saying before, that one scene where she finds out that, like, the engagement's being broken off, like, Maureen was saying, she lets herself feel, finally, and that's, like, where she does gain some of that sensibility, I think. So... Yeah, I mean, they both learn from one another. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, they take in each of the traits. So cute. Um, <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, in your opinion, is the ending wholly happy? Um, I feel like that's hard in the sense that, like, it is, but there's parts that, like, for the most part it is, but there's, like, I guess that's the whole question what I, don't like, <laughs> what I don't like is Marianne like while she gains sense she really becomes like subdued in a way like more more than just like learning it's like because of her illness she like loses some of the vibrancy but I like I don't know if that's to her gaining sense I feel like it's more obvious in the book in the movie and uh, in the book in the movie she like still is very like withdrawn even at the end of the movie like she's still happy but she's very withdrawn because at, like after that situation so i don't like but like that's like i think that's just like a wrestling thing in myself where i'm like is that because she's like gained sense that she like is less like intense or is it because she really like has been hurt and she's like still learning to like love again at the end of the book like she's still gaining that back I don't know that was more questions than actual answers so <laughs> I mean uh, uh, every single one of Jane Austen's novels end with I, feel, I hear myself repeating is it bad okay um end with like a marriage or you know two, two people getting together um I don't know about sense sensibility but um does that fix the problems with um uh, the Dashwood family? Does it fix the problem with Fanny? It, it doesn't. And there's probably still going to be straining and, and strains with the family. So I don't think just getting married is going to solve the problem. And so it's probably not all like fully happiness, but there's like partial happiness. And I think just getting older and living with those people is, will work itself out, I guess. 
And I was being really critical. <laughs> Do you guys agree? I don't know. No, I think yeah. I agree. Oh, Wireless Memory says, if you could describe Sense and Sensibility or another Austin novel with one song, what would it be? Oh, I have to give this way too much thought. <laughs> I know. I, I'm just like, ever since I saw it, I've been thinking so, and I still don't have an answer. <laughs> um, like, I feel like it's easier to pick songs for characters than it is for, like, the books because the books are so complex. And there's so many things that go into them. Yeah. That it's, like, hard. Like, I'd rather pick a theme song for a character than okay. a book. Let's do that. So, what for Eleanor? <laughs> for Eleanor? Do we have to? Is it, um... Any song? No oh, way. I have one for Mary. <laughs> oh, go one for Mary. Anne. Go ahead. Satisfied. <laughs> <laughs> True though. Oh, uh, I see that. So very true. Yeah. Oh, my chair is so squeaky. I'm sorry about that. Like, I feel like I have to think about this a lot more. Like, I'm in the same boat as Hannah. I was like, I really need to like listen to music and think about this the before is, I can come up with something. This type what of about? thing is like really important to me because then I will like forever associate the song with like the <laughs> character or the book. So like, I can't just come up with this on the spot. Like it has to be like an in-depth process where I come up with any the entire other, thing. Any Austin characters, like any songs for any. Oh. Um, Miss Independent for Elizabeth Bennett. Yes. I love that <laughs> song. <laughs> no, 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 no. Or like, honestly, like Emma. Uh, either one of those. Or, no, you know what Emma's could be? Oh. is Matchmaker from Fiddler on the Roof. <laughs> yes. but also, but also, I think Miss Independent would be best for her. She's like, I'm not going to fall in love. And then it's like, really? JK. JK. <laughs> she fell in love. <laughs> Wait. No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to associate it with her for the rest of my life. Oh, Hannah, you're so right. Like, What's oh. the problem? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I love that song, so yeah, it works. Uh, I can't think of any other ones. Hmm. I'm, like, trying to associate, like, an Adele song with somebody because she's just so emotional. I don't know. Does anyone have any ideas? <laughs> Sarah oh. Bareilles. I'm like, I know there's one of her yeah. that... Hmm. <sighs> um... Like, all I'm thinking of is hello, and that does not go with anything. Well, I'm thinking like someone, someone like you. you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I feel like, mm, well, like. Oh, 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 oh. It could, um, someone like you could work with, um, uh, Persuasion. What's her face? Yeah. What is her name? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> No, oh, okay. Oh my goodness. No. <laughs> Anne is, no. Anne? Yeah, I think is so. Anne. Is that her? I saw Anne, but I also saw Mary, and I don't know which one's which. I think it's Anne. Anne. Is it Anne? Anne. Yeah. I'm yeah, going to Google it and make sure. I wish nothing but the best. Oh, Anne Elliot. Okay, Anne. yeah, okay, okay. Okay, yeah. that's what it is. <laughs> We go. Oh, that's embarrassing. Uh, oh, 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 no. <laughs> oh, oh, well, we have like six minutes left. But before we go, I just wanted to let everybody know that right after this, at, I think maybe like 6.30 my time, so 6.30 Eastern Standard Time, I'm going to be doing a movie night for the Jane Austen Book Club because we finally finished watching oh, all of them. Yeah, yeah. so if, if you guys are able to watch it. Yeah, okay, so I'm gonna make like uh, the rabbit thing, which I've done for all the other movie nights, but so in half an hour, we're going to be watching Jane Austen Book Club. Also, the Ostentatious Book Club is going to be continuing on past Jane Austen's books. We are going to be going on to other classics, there is going to be some Bronte sisters, but also, like, yeah. But also some other classics, too. Whatever anyone wants to read, honestly. It doesn't have to be Jane Austen-y. It could be, like, Dracula or, like, Sherlock Holmes or something. I don't know. The Great Gatsby. Um, but, yeah, no. so. <laughs> you don't like the, Ga the Great Gatsby? No, I don't want to read that again. I, like, 
Do you know how much of me is like, this would never work and we shouldn't actually do this for ostentatious, but I really want to reread The Count of Monte Cristo. Yeah, but, like, I love that book. So this book club. There's literally no way I'll finish that in a month. I mean, we can read the abridged version, which is 500 club. pages. The abridged version is? Yes. Gosh. I don't remember reading that much, but it's so good. It's so We can do that for like two months. Okay, anyway, what I was talking about is that the <laughs> Constitution's uh, book of the month is actually two months. It is February and March. We are reading Jane Eyre by which Bronte sister? Charlotte Bronte. Charlotte, Charlotte Bronte? Bronte? Yes. Uh, we are probably going to read Wuthering Heights eventually. Sorry. But Sorry. Hannah's happy. Hannah's happy. I <laughs> read it, so I cannot comment. But yeah, so if you've already started or if you want to join in, there's still an entire other month for you to read it. And also, I don't know what we're going to read after that. So if you have any ideas of what you want to read or anything, please comment, like tweet us on Twitter. Or there, I do have a Goodreads page dedicated to Ostentatious, and there is an entire, uh, you know, what is it called? Like chat section thing that is uh, a bunch of suggestions. So just comment there and we'll probably read one of uh, one of your suggestions. Obviously we will. So yeah, mm -hmm. that is that's what's happening. So in half an hour, go over to my Twitter, which is Zoe Hurt. It's down in the description box. And that is where I'm going to be posting the link to movie. And it's a really good movie. I really enjoy it. It's one of my favorite movies. So I'm really excited about that. But yeah, do you guys have any other final thoughts? <sighs> I'm so happy that we read all the novels. Yeah, I'm so proud of this. We did it, guys. We got to read every single one of them. Yeah, there were some duds, but <laughs> hopefully they were successes. Yeah, thank you all so much for going along with this plan because it was just me wanting to do it by myself and then you all are so nice and you joined me for six months and now you're agreeing for more time. <laughs> <laughs> for more time. Uh, it's yeah. good for us. <laughs> yeah. Expending the mind. Yes. So I think that's it. We finished it all. We finished all the books. Thank you, Jane Austen. You're, you're the real MVP. True. And now we are going to Hulu. Bye. Bye. Bye.